And so I think this is the natural transition into the sadness. Um, I uh, read Alex's review, who uh, who it's on Film Threat right now. Uh, I saw a conversation between the two of you. And this uh, this feels like a very effed up movie. So you, you were talking about the effects of COVID uh, <laughs> on here. And this uh, starts out with this, you know, this little tiny, you know, the, the COVID molecule that we often see. Uh, and it mutates and it grows. I mean, does this movie... Uh, a result of COVID or is it a happy coincidence? So it was filmed during COVID, I believe. Okay. Um, so, it, and it might not have been, I didn't read the director's statement, so it might not have been, it might have started that way, uh, but it okay, definitely. But they're incorporating it. Into absolutely. It. Yes. And so there is this, this virus now, it's called the Alvin virus that affects the limbic system of the brain so it makes people completely aware you know exactly what you're doing but yet you have no self-control no empathy no sympathy no nothing and you are you are essentially stripped down to the most basic human desires like our most primal levels and and you know we enjoy uh the the you know the uh aspects of life that only bring about pain to others to, to, to provide pleasure for us. And it is brutal. It is brutal. So, oh uh, yeah. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. So, yeah. um, so they, so you, you basically commit these atrocities and are fully aware of what you're doing. Is that the idea? Or That's the idea. And that is why they call it the sadness because some of these creatures after been affected, these people after they've been affected, you know, they still talk like normal people, maybe be a little bit more sinister, um, but they, they uh, sometimes they will elicit a, a simple tear down there almost. The, and one of the doctors explains it. It says, you know, perhaps it is their subconscious registering these atrocities and and reacting to it. But otherwise, they, they have no impulse control whatsoever. Right. Uh, so, um, and it, it, it's like 28 days later, but if all those, they weren't like mindless zombies that would, you know, that would sprint. These yeah. are walking, talking, deliberately moving, calculating entities. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're saying it's the, uh, you're, it's the zombie genre, but you're removing the undead aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly it. And, and it's got a real grindhouse heart to it. Um, it's not. Uh, um, it, it is not for everyone. Like if this, if it's yeah, not evident saying. already, I should already. I should put that in, that that it is. It is fast paced, but he also has a very good control of of uh, the modulations of the film. So he, you know, it starts off and it builds very slowly. Like we see something out of the corner of our eye here, something disruptive there, and then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. Now he gives us time to breathe here and there. But there's always this looming sense because of the out of control nature of everyone that anything can happen at any time. Uh, yeah. So um, Alex gave it a 10. I, th I think you gave it an eight and a half. Uh, what, what is yeah. it about this movie that makes it that's has it stand up, uh, stand out from the genre uh, and not necessarily, you know, it's, it's a really interesting idea. It but is. But as a film, what, what makes it stand out from the rest? You know, to me, I felt like it truly embraced like the the Hong Kong's early Category Three films that they um, th that they put out. You know, those those that were banned, and it it embraced that, and it embraced its grindhouse nature, and it wasn't afraid to go to places that you just did not think it would go to. Um, but yet, there was still a human connection. There was still a human core to it. We still rooted for the the protagonists in it. Um, you know, they, they spent a few moments in the beginning to really establish this this connection they had and this love for each other they had. So we were invested in the outcome of it. But so is uh, it a story of um, of curing it or is it a story of survival? Survival, complete survival. We are we follow essentially two protagonists. It's a, a boyfriend and girlfriend. They leave in the morning. He goes to take her to work. They have, you know, this will be seemingly banal conversations with each other. Mm -hmm. Um and then 
kind of like Quiet Place 2, where, you know, you start to get these, you know, the, the television screen in the beginning talking about all the chaos that's happening mm-hmm. elsewhere. We get those little, those little kernels of, of, uh, of information. Uh, and then he drops her off and then they're separated. They're separated for the majority of the film. And it's all about them trying to reunite with each other. All right. Oh, crazy. All right. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is, I want to say, is it Chinese or is it, is it Asian? Well, it's funny. It was filmed in Taiwan. Oh, okay. Um, but the director is actually, uh, uh, Canadian, uh, okay. Shabazz, uh, Jabaz, Rob Jabaz, I believe his name was, and he's Canadian who lives in, and who's been living in and has filmed this in Taiwan. All right. Well, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be saying this. No, no. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I will tell you, when I, when I went on the site, that, like there's all these warnings, you have to be 18 to see this. Uh, it's. It's uh and and I think uh, it's more for the the gory yeah uh, images and and it sounds like they're they're just holding nothing back here. They they are holding it back. And I think what I did like about it though is again going back to the grindhouse category mm-hmm. three nature of it. There is a and I, I hate to use the term, but there is a playfulness about it. But there's there's it, it's unlike something like uh, uh oh, shoot um martyrs or um uh, serbian story or serbian mm-hmm. movie um where it's it, it's not just to to demonstrate gore um or or suffering or pain or what have you um and those were a lot more solemn than this is this yeah this has you know the kills are creative you know there are situations that they're in there's there's a lot of comedy throughout with some of the characters yeah. um but but very very dark heart yeah, and I think that's the key is the fact that because people are aware, they they have to grasp and deal with the uh, the horror of yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Okay, and uh, unlike Suicide Squad, yeah. where I think you just begin accepting the fact that people are expendable and they're just going to die left or right. Exactly. All exactly. Right. You just embrace the title. 